Good afternoon, I'm meteorologist John Marshall, updating on powerful Hurricane Matthew, now located about 200 and let's say 20 miles south of the western tip of Haiti, which is right there. Folks, this is a formidable hurricane, wind sustained of 140 miles an hour, and the storm continues to move north at about six miles an hour. Well-defined hurricane, very powerful, has not lost any of its punch. A category four, there is Jamaica, Haiti, and just to the top of your screen or the north of your screen is Cuba. Storm continues to move steadfast to the north at six miles an hour, and unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna graze the western peninsula of Haiti later tonight. Uh, they're expecting flash flooding, mudslides. A lot of these homes are built along the mountainside, so unfortunately, it does not look good for western Haiti and portions of uh, Cuba as the storm continues to move through. But take a look at this well central dense overcast. The eye is about 12 miles in diameter, and it goes through some fluctuations, the hurricane. It weakens just slightly to 130 miles an hour, then pops back up to 145. This is typical for these type of strong systems as they move uh, throughout the Caribbean and the Atlantic Basin. There has been some new developments in the last couple of hours, and we're going to talk about that right now. What I'm going to show you are two computer models. The first one, and this is the uh, jet stream at about 30,000 feet, is the American model, is the GFS. And the GFS is, uh, again, showing us a closer track to the coast. What I'm noticing right now is a ridge of high pressure located over the western Atlantic. Folks, that's going to keep this storm close to the coast. And then we have a trough of low pressure over the midsection of the country. How do they all interact with one another? Well, the ridge loses its influence, but the GFS does push the hurricane or what's left of it along the Carolina coast and then out to sea. Now, the second model is the European model. Again, the jet stream level at about oh, 30,000 feet. There's that strong area of high pressure located off of the Western Atlantic. That's what's changed. This hurricane will come very close to the southeastern seaboard on all the models, even the European. But no real large trough of low pressure, more of a progressive flow, and then it makes a quick right-hand turn out to sea with the European. That's the million-dollar question. Does it come up the coast and affect us, or does it stay out to sea? Here's the spaghetti plot. I know you guys like this. Um, yeah, we get a little joking here about this, all these tracks and models, but here it is, the latest one out of uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon, this Tuesday this uh, afternoon, and you'll see that it is located just along the coastline. Now, don't take this verbatim from North Carolina north, okay? Do not. We're certain, pretty certain anyway, that the track will be very close to the Carolina coast, but again... Does it get kicked out to sea? And we've seen hurricanes make sharp right-hand bend turns right out to sea and miss us, or does it come up closer to the coastline? Again, just showing you what a lot of these models, and there's about a dozen, two dozen of them with uh, the tropics, what it's doing with this system. Um, I'm not buying this right now, this track up and along the eastern seaboard north of Cape Hatteras. I am buying the track along the Carolina coast. Again, it's still five, six days away. This time frame um, for the storm to actually be, uh, let's say, where well, the Hurricane Center track is, 8 o'clock Saturday morning, still off the Carolinas. Okay? So, pretty confident that the Carolinas may get a direct hit or just offshore. Not confident at all what happens north of the outer banks of North Carolina. My advice to you, stay tuned. Uh, the new development again this evening, this afternoon, is it closer to the coastline over the southeastern portion of the United States? You bet, with that ridge of high pressure that's very strong. And here it is, hurricane warnings. Uh, Jamaica, Jamaica, you possibly will be spared of the full brunt of the storm, and that's good news for that island. The hurricane force winds are only a 35-mile radius. The storm is very tightly compact, and the tropical storm force winds extend outward from the center of about a couple hundred miles. Okay? Haiti... I'm feeling for you. Eastern Cuba and the Bahamas does not look good, okay? What does look good is the sunshine outside, if you want to be a little lighter in topic here, that we've had today. It looked nice. It felt nice. And uh, will it stick around? Well, let's take a look at the five-day forecast right now. And for tomorrow, and we actually have a uh, high-pressure system that's going to work in over northern New England, it's going to give us an easterly flow, 
clouds, some sun, maybe a few pockets of drizzle or spotty showers, 69 degrees. That's about the average high temperature for this time of the year. Several sunny symbols. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Flirting with the 70, 72 degree mark. It's a fall classic midweek. Then for Saturday, all eyes on Matthew. Does it come up the coast or make that sharp right-hand turn off of Cape Hatteras? I wish I knew the answer, folks. I don't. You know where to get a no-nonsense, no-hype forecast at www.johnmarshallweather.com. Enjoy this afternoon, this evening, and uh, I'll have updates as condition warrant. You know where to get it, right there. Take care.